And so, so again, we're going to start with the customer segments first. So Tesla's customer segments could be uh, a high-end luxury sedan or SUV buyer. Um, and then you can narrow down and expand on, on what that what that buyer looks like, right? What their income level looks like, what yeah. their demographic information looks like, where do they live? You know, things like that. Um, yeah. And Ricardo, yeah. before you continue, I would like to perhaps set the stage. Um, what you're going to see are very high level uh, notes on the pads. And, and typically, that's what typically uh, entrepreneurs do the first time around. They just start high level and then they go in, in, into detail. So, for example, Ricardo in this exercise identified that, that Tesla is going after high end luxury sedan or SUV buyers, right? But then we need to go, like he said, we, can, we need to go a little bit deeper and find out the age bracket, the, rev, the annual revenues, right? Or income, uh, the size of the family, where do they live? And so we need to get into that level of details later on. So, and it's because, not because you, you just build this business model canvas, you have a canvas. It's going to take you about 10 different versions of your Canva to finally get that final version. So I, I will say to set up the stage, this is the first version and then yeah. we need to dig into it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great point. And so this is, this is high level. We're looking at it from 40,000 feet. Um, but obviously you want to narrow down and, 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 and dig, dig deeper into each of the, of the stickies that, that you're, or the, the assumptions that you're making. Uh, when yeah, you're because, yeah, because in the beginning, it's all a hypothesis and Absolutely. we need to, to test the test it val and, and validate in order to adjust. So, yep. right. Great point. So a second customer segment that Tesla has is the mid, the mid market tech enthusiast, right? And so let's talk about the, the value proposition now. So val the value proposition in, in simple terms is best in class, fully electric vehicles. But if you think back when Tesla first came into the marketplace, they really focused on the, before, let's, let's think about this. Before Tesla, what kind of, what the electric vehicles looked like? I mean, they were, they were boxy. They were, they were, they weren't, they weren't, good looking cars right and 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 they were not fully electric either so they were not fully electric and that's yeah. the reason why they didn't take off until tesla came along right right and mm -hmm. one of the things that tesla did very well was create a, a beautiful car uh, they also rolled rolled it out in in phases which we can talk about that a little bit later but um so th they created a great looking vehicle um they had extended range that others didn't have they also had their, their, the technology that they used. They were much further ahead in the battery technology, also on the cooling technology, the drivetrain, everything, uh, even the software, which is a critical component to, to Tesla vehicles um, that really differentiated them from their competition. Which, so, by the way, I think the, the, the software is a revenue stream or it, it will become a revenue stream for them at some point. And I don't oh, think absolutely. we think about that all the time. Yeah. They have, uh, they have so much data, right. And now yeah. where we're, they're rolling out the, the fully autonomous capability, I mean, that puts them in a whole another bracket alone. So, yeah. So, so all those, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, I was going to say that just to remind everyone that, that all those value that, that we just mentioned about Tesla, like the range, the, the design, um, all that can go into the value proposition box, okay? Uh, so, so not not because it's not here, it should not be here. It should be here. Just that we just giving you a sample from a high end view. Absolutely. So you saw what we did there, right? We put the sticky there, a simple sticky, best in class fully electric vehicles. But then we narrowed down and, and we we thought through why that that is, right? Why is Tesla's value proposition so strong? And so you yeah. have to do that in your business when you're doing this exercise as well. So, so if we were at the in the office, uh, we'd be putting stickies on their value proposition with all those great ideas or, or or great facts about that company, right? Absolutely, right. Great point. So, so now, how does Tesla reach their customers? So let's look at the channels tab. So, this is pretty disruptive in itself because. Uh, 
standard manufacturers, vehicle manufacturers don't do this still, right? They have a, a middleman to sell to their customer. So Tesla decided to sell directly to their customer with their online platform. So you can go online today and quickly through your phone app, quickly order your Tesla and, and put a down payment down and they'll, they'll have it delivered to your house. Or you can go into their, one of their, their retail stores to, to pick it up. So, so their e-commerce stores, so sell service online, they do have retail stores and galleries uh, in, in place, ubiquitous places uh, that you wouldn't find dealerships uh, like you do. Like you can go to a, a mall and see a, a Tesla storefront there. Uh, and so they sell direct to consumer. That's one of the things that they've done very good and, and, and uh, very different than their competitors. So, so far, I mean, you just said something that caught my attention uh, about something that we mentioned in the beginning, that their business model is a hybrid, if, as you notice, right? So they, they're, um, they, they're selling vehicles, right? But they're also collecting data. They have, they're selling vehicles online, but they also have uh, brick and mortar ways to sell their vehicles. So, so this is a good example of a hybrid model. Yep. With, with multiple channels, right? Yeah, so definitely. So now let's look at their customer relationships. Why, why do customers love Tesla, right? So I think one of the, one of the things they do really well is their, the customer experience that they deliver their customers. So, um, the brand, we all know Tesla today, right? Um, and so it's, a, it has, it's built a really great reputation. And so another, another relationship, um, customer relationship that they have um, is the, the free or low cost charging network throughout the United States, throughout the world, really, that they're, they're, they're building out where you can, you know, supercharge your Tesla for very, if you were one of the early adopters, it's still free and it'll forever be free. Um, and, and if you buy a Tesla today, it's, it's still lower cost and it charges your, your vehicle pretty quickly. So. And I think we can add to that something that is out of the box that is crazy. I just thought about it. Um, the fact that they're selling a solar panel for your home could be a, a customer relationship hook to keep you engaged with the brand, right? Yes. Not only you're depending on, on driving the car, but you, now they're, the, now Tesla is powering your house and you, you're controlling that power from your phone. So you see how they're looping you into their brand and into their product and service and keeping you inside that circle. So that's, that's a, that's a pretty clever. That's a great point, Rafael. And hold that thought, the solar panel thought, we'll talk about that here in a little while. Yeah. Um, and so let's look at the next box. So how do they make money? Pretty straightforward car sales, right? Uh, it's one of the, the key components and then maintenance and repair. And so, so for, for this, for this business model or this, this value proposition, we're strictly focusing on on the on the on the vehicle side of, of Tesla, yeah. And so so that's our the right side of our canvas. All right, and so let's talk about the left side of the canvas now. The we'll start with the key activities. Um, and so some of the things that uh, Tesla does is uh, research and development, which is a critical component of their business. Uh, their design, right? They design beautiful cars. Uh, and, and I think one of the most important parts as well is the, the software development. Uh, and so that's in a nutshell, at high level, that those are their key activities. Uh, other key activities include their manufacturing and their sales. Mm -hmm. And so we'll move on to the, the next box here. So some of their key resources to make the whole business model work are their gigafactory. So this is where they build their, 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 their cars. Uh, the automation of those gigafactories and the engineering that they've built out, which is excellent. Uh, their battery technology and autonomous driving, right? So the software development that, that, and the technology and R and D that goes into their, their autonomous driving. Yeah. The intellectual properties is amazing. And, and the collection of data, I mean, wow. Absolutely. So we'll move on to the next box, key partners. So some of the key partners, OEM suppliers, and so when you're doing this exercise, you want to then narrow in or, 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 or uh, focus in on who those OEM suppliers are. Mm -hmm. uh, Tesla also has major suppliers. So they have uh, 
charging points. We talked briefly about that. Um, Toyota and Panasonic, those are two of their, their key partners. They work with Toyota to, to manufacture some of the parts. And then they worked with Panasonic to manufacture some of the batteries. Uh, the car leasing company. So they outsource this. So when you when you want to lease a Tesla, they it's it's branded like you're doing it with Tesla, but in reality they've partnered with with somebody to 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 work on that to to deliver that value. Mm-hmm. And then the government, right? And if you recall a few years back, you there was incentives that you could take advantage of that were government subsidies to mm-hmm to incentivize people to buy electric vehicles. So, so the government is another key partner. And so last but not least, we'll look at the cost structure. So pretty straightforward. So you have your cost of goods sold. So that's things like materials, labor, manufacturing. You have your SG&A expenses. So this is the selling general and administrative cost and the cost of R&D as well. So Rafael, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. Well, I just, uh, I, I keep looking at Toyota and Panasonic. I, I know that that Tesla at, at some point, well, they, they already realized that they they want to get into the battery business too. And I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ricardo, that they just opened or they're planning to open a battery manufacturing facility in Texas or somewhere in the, in the Midwest. Yep. So uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because perhaps they want to cost, uh, reduce their cost, right? Or, or, or increase their margins by now that they that we're a little bit bigger, let's start building our own batteries since we are we have multiple businesses supplying different type of batteries, not only absolutely. in cars, but in other in houses, et cetera. So yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So you wanna uh, you wanna always create more revenue streams and reduce your cost structures. So so when you, in simple and lame terms, you want to see, that's what you want to think about. How do I generate more revenue while reducing more costs? So, um, and one other thing that Rafael touched on earlier. So this is the value proposition and the canvas for their electric vehicles, but that's not the only thing uh, Tesla does. Uh, if you remember, they acquired uh, Solar City a few years back. And so now they're, they, they, their, their other customer segment, which could be, they could be in the same space as their, 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 their automobile buyers are the green energy community, right? So anybody who's conscious and wants to go solar, their value proposition is offering solar energy systems. And so the rest of the boxes are very applicable to this, to the, this other value proposition, other customer segment. Um, so in, in revenue streams, you can add the solar energy panels and the batteries as a, as a revenue stream as well. And, and we just learned that we can add it to the customer relation, relationship box too. Um, so again, it, 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 is a, it may be a different business model, but at the same time also you can use some of the information on the left side to help support that business idea or that business uh, division within your company. Uh, but when you go through the exercise, just like Ricardo did here, you want to use different color or use a different business model canvas page, just because there may be occasions where you need to have a different set of activities or resources in order to execute execute that, that idea or that value proposition. Absolutely. And so so with that, we'll talk briefly about testing the business model canvas. And w- one thing I want to mention on that on that note, Rafael. So it's 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 always best, in in my opinion, to to have a, a, a nice big poster of the value proposition where you can post it and use stickies too. But nowadays, especially with the pandemic, and if you want to collaborate with your teams, uh, you can do this online as well. And there's tools like you can use Miro Board or Figma to to leverage their, their platform and, and do this exercise uh, virtually and collaborate with your teams as well. So. Are those free or you have to pay Ricardo? I think they're, you could, you could create a free account and there's templates that you can use in there as well. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure they have uh, uh, other revenue streams in their business models as well. So. Right, right, right. Okay. So, uh, so again, if, if you think about it, it's just a cheat, right? It's just going from a napkin 
to an eight by 11 piece of paper where you can then write down your hypothesis and go out there and talk to a hundred, at least a hundred potential users, potential partners, channels, let them feed you information. So think about it, you're, you're in the intelligent side of thing or you're scouting out there or, and, or you're, and you're trying to figure out or find out more information about your enemy or, or another country, right? In this case is you wanna find information about what you're trying to sell and you want to collect all that data, all that data, and then come back to your A by 11 and start making adjustment in order for you to figure out if all these boxes are talking to each other. And if they are talking to each other, then you're on the right path. So a good example. So what is talking to each other, Raphael? Well, like we mentioned earlier, earlier, if you find out, if you have a channel that can provide value proposition to your customer segment, well, that's, you have three boxes that are talking. And if we, let's say that channel is also a key partner, well, that, that box is talking to that other box. So you see what I'm, what I'm saying by that? Uh, it, it just need to make sense. In, in it, you, when you look at it, you need to have the rights, the right revenues. You need to have the right key partners. You need to be providing the right value proposition. You can just say, well, I'm the, my value proposition is that I'm the best company in, in the city of Orlando. Well, that's not, you know, anybody can say that, right? But when you go out there and you start asking questions such as, you know, why do you, why do you like my services or why do you like my company or why do you buy from me? Or would you like, do you think this idea will help you with that migraine? Then let them talk, hear, hear them out and then come back to the table and, and adjust your business model. Absolutely. So yeah, so with the business model, you, you're, you, you have a, a great hypothesis, right? So this is especially true if you're, if you're a, a new business and you're, you're exploring an idea. Uh, this could also be true if you're an existing business and you either want to refine your existing business model or you want to expand it into and test different business ideas or business models within your business. So, so you know, once you co you've completed your 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 the canvas, now you're ready to go and test that hypothesis, that assumption, those assumptions, right? And the best way to do that, like Raphael mentioned, is through customer interviews, and and depending on where your customers are. Uh, or what business model you're in. So if you're a business to consumer, 100 interviews, at least 100 interviews is a good benchmark for you to, to validate, have some sort of, of validation, good validation um, uh, feedback uh, to know whether, hey, this is, this is, there is a, in fact a problem and my value proposition does solve the problem or not. So that's the business to consumer. But if you're, you're B2B, right? So say you're selling to, to other companies. So it's going to be really tough interviewing 100, 100 uh, uh, customers if you're, if you're B2B. So a good benchmark for B2B is, is usually 10. Uh, if you can interview 10 companies and get some feedback, customer feedback, then, then, you, have, then you can have a benchmark for, for whether the, the business model is viable or, or not. Uh, and then government. Government is a whole beast of its own, right? So same thing as companies, right? You don't have to go, uh, the more, the better, but you don't have to interview 100 government agencies is, is, is what I'm trying to say. So, but, but what you can do, you do your 10, right? You have your basic. And then what you do is every time you provide a service or on an annual basis, you want to send out a survey out there, right? and listen to your customer. You always need to be listening to your customer. Absolutely. So without thinking about it, at the end of the year, you may have spoken or gather information from 50 companies. And as a CEO, you need to take all that data and that information and use it because it will benefit you and will give you the competitive edge and advantage because you'll have intelligence in front of you and you can start modifying your business model for the present or moving forward down the road. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so, so that's what this tool will enable you to do. So when, when you go out there and test and you gather the customer feedback, you can then come back and, and if you need to, you can pivot, right? If you, if you learn that, Hey, my customer, my customer's pain is not the one that I originally set out to or thought in my hypothesis, 
But now I know that, you know, multiple customers that I interviewed have the same pain point. And I know with my business model, if I tweak it a little bit, I can solve that pain point. So that's what this, this tool can allow you to do and find out. Yeah, another way to use the tool, um, I can tell you this, that I can tell you that there are big corporation dedicated to support the Department of Def Defense that use this document internally to validate ideas and projects internally within the company. So let's say you're already you're in business, you're taking part of this conference and you're doing well. Perhaps you hit a flat a plateau or or perhaps you you are entertaining a new product or idea, go through this exercise with your team. You know, uh, it doesn't need to be just utilized to build a model, a, a complete business model, but just to test the hypothesis on the product or service that that, that division within your department or within your company is trying to do. So keep that in mind that it's, it's, a, it's a very good way to articulate and validate an idea our business model concept and so on. It is a living document. And if you're starting out and you haven't done your business plan, don't worry about it. Do this first, then do the business plan. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely do this first. Right. Uh, by the time with business plans, it's a little bit tough, right? I think business plans are good when you need them. Uh, say you're, you're, you need to secure some a, a credit line, then a business plan makes sense. Uh, but by the time you complete your business plan, it's already obsolete. It's so, already obsolete. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. use this tool as a living document for your business to refine and perfect your processes and ensure that everything within your business talks to each other. All the boxes talk to each other and, and it makes sense. So, yeah. So one more thing I wanted to, to talk about another way to break the canvas uh, to analyze the risk so you can, you can look at it this way. These three boxes describe the desirability risk. So this is where you can ask customers or, or validate that customers aren't interested, right? And so that, that the lower the risk, the better you'll be off. So I guess the more interest you have here, the, the more desirable this, this, this business model is. And so the other one is a feasibility risk. We can't build or deliver, right? or we can, we can build it and deliver it. So this is, this is another risk assessment you can do. And then you have at the bottom, the viability risk. We can't earn enough money. So out of these three components, the two most important ones are desirability and viability. Most of the time you can build, if you can't build in-house, you can find somebody can, who can build the, the, you know, the, the, whatever your product or service is for you. Uh, and so that's, it is important. It, it, you have to have it, but it's not as critical as the desirability and viability. So definitely focus on the desirability and viability first as prior, prioritize those and then leave the feasibility last. So uh, you don't want to build it before they come is what I'm trying to say here. So, and this is, this is a new concept that Alexander Osterwalder uh, put together. He actually published a new book on testing business ideas. So if you want to learn more about that, you can check out uh, their website, Strategizer there. So, um, and it, I was going to say, and if for some reason you already built it and they haven't come, then start engaging with your customer and start looking into this to make changes because you yep. can, you can always modify and, and try to get back on track. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, you can, you can, create a new value proposition or explore a new customer segment, right? And the only way to do that is to test, test your assumptions, test your hypothesis. Yeah. And, and based on my experience, Ricardo, a, a lot of the companies, if they, if they go back to their key activities and cost structure, just there and perhaps channels, if they make changes to those three areas, then they can start gaining market in the, or traction in the market and, and they can start finding ways to pivot. Yep, absolutely. And so this is an iterative process, right? It's, uh, we've, we've talked, we've hit that on that many times uh, throughout this presentation, but you know, know that this is a living document and it will change uh, with your, as your business evolves and, and grows and changes. And so, so always, always, you know, go back to the drawing board and, and ensure that 
that, hey, it is working, or if it's not working, or if you start seeing things are, are changing, then then figure out why, you know, and you can use this exercise to do that as well. So, and, and so we have three books that, that you, if you want to learn more about the canvas that we can suggest. So the first one is the Startup Owners Manual by Steve Blank. So he's, He's considered the father of the lean startup methodology. He's a professor at Stanford and a couple other large uh, universities around the, the country. Uh, Eric Ries is this book, The Lean Startup, uh, is another great book that talks about the methodology as a whole. And then Business Model Generation by Alexander Osterwalder. This actually dives really deep into the canvas and different exercises that you can do to test the, the, your, your business concepts and your, your canvas. So, so with that, we would just thank you guys. Thank you guys for, for tuning in today. Uh, we hope that the, the presentation today was of value. If you want to get a hold of us, feel free to reach out or visit us on our website. And so, yeah. And I, 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 I want to thank uh, better in Florida for the opportunity. Um, um, again, if, if you're in business and, and, and I'm, I'm not, well, I guess you are, you're participating in this conference, uh, make sure you reach out to the folks at Veteran Florida. They have some great, great, um, uh, ways to help you, um, and through partners like us. So, um, start there. And if, like Ricardo said, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, we, we, we tend to meet with folks, um, every day. Um, so no cost, just reach out and we'll give you the best advice possible. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. Big shout out to, to, uh, veterans Florida for putting this on. Uh, we're, we're honored to, to be partners of veterans Florida and work with you guys. And so, so yeah, definitely check out all the resources veterans Florida has to offer. Uh, if you're a veteran, this is, that's the best place to get access to resources in the state. So. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys again. And we hope you have a great rest of the conference, great rest of the day and, and uh, reach out if, if we can help in any way. And, and think about it or, or remember, um, it is something as simple as a checklist. Uh, just divide it into boxes and organizing your thoughts. And so you can articulate your ideas and validate what you're trying to do. So don't get discouraged. Just try it move away from a napkin and take it to an eight by 11 piece of paper and, and the journey will begin. That's right. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Take care.